Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. It is a beautiful fall day. Um, it's overcast, it's been raining um, earlier today. Um, the temperature is around 65, so not too cool, not too hot. So I say beautiful just because of all the pretty colors. Um, it's just everywhere you go. The leaves are on the ground. The colors um, have changed. It's beautiful um, color. So it's a, a beautiful fall day. And 65 degrees, I'll take that. I will take that. So uh, I thought I would join you. Um, I thought I would take you along with me today and give you a tour. Um, our first fall tour of what's going on in the hot tunnel and walk you through all the beds and stuff like that It is literally the last um, Last couple of days of October. It's about to be November and so this is um, summer is officially gone and we are we are in fall gardening for sure so I wanted to document um, this first um, Fall garden tour and take you along with me um, things in the back of the house. I think you've seen um, are doing really really good out there still waiting on my garlic to come so we haven't planted garlic yet I'm hoping that it comes this week so we can go ahead and get it in the ground. I really wanted it to be earlier But I don't know what's going on with the garlic company companies. Um, they're all a little bit slow um, This time this time around but things in the back of the house are doing well um, lettuce is popping um, Everything out there is doing really really well and so it survived um, the frost which is good um, so I'm very, very grateful for that. So I'm out here in the outside garden. I'll show you um, how the stuff is doing out here. I did have some insect damage on some of the cabbages that I had to pull early last week. Um, but let's see what else is going on. Hubby is out here getting the remaining of the summer plants. So remember, you know, about two or three weeks ago, we cleaned out um, all of the summer stuff. But there were a couple of plants that I just could not get up out the ground. I cut them down, but he's doing the final yank <laughs> yank and pull for all of those plants that i couldn't get out of the ground it's only like four or five of them so i think he has two left to go and um literally everything from the summer will be literally out of the ground um we still haven't decided what we're going to do yet with um this space over the winter i really wanted to plant a cover crop i really wanted to plant a cover crop but i don't think that um i don't know if i'm too late to plant one i've never done one before but i know that it has to be established enough and germinate and all that before it gets too cold we have had our first frost but um the 10-day forecast is in the 70s um there's not a, another frost in the next 10 days or so but i'm not quite sure so still thinking about it um if we don't plant a cover crop then i think we're just going to leave the black paper down um yeah i'm not quite sure what my other options are but let me turn you around let you see some of the um the crops out here okay you can see some cabbages and you can also see some holes the holes is where i had um great pest damage on the cabbage that i pulled off it just didn't even look like it was sal salvageable these right here look okay we will see if they actually head and produce anything. Um, and just when I thought I had planted too many cabbages, I probably didn't plant enough because most of them have been eaten up by the bugs, at least out here. And these are the ones that I planted first. So you can see, again, some of the damage but these look better than the ones that were there before. You can see the collard greens had some pest damage, but overall not, not too bad. Um, and then these are, I think, turnip greens. They look pretty good, but as you continue to go down the row, you can see that I have some purple um, and yellowing on the turnip greens. When I looked it up, it said that it may be a phosphorus deficiency. This is my first time growing turnip greens. So, um, I do know that my soil out here is deficient um, and phosphorus from the soil test that we had done before we planted this summer. So that kind of makes sense. So I'm going to put some um, stuff out here to try to help it and we'll see what happens. Um, you can see that right in here is a little bit of pest damage. I'm hoping now that, um, that the weather is getting cooler that we'll be able to get, get rid of her get rid of the pest so now we're in the hot tunnel and i'll show you what's going on in here 
Um, overall, I'm really pleased with how things are looking um, in the high tunnel. So most things, I guess, I started probably mid-September. So they've been, um, I would say over the last four to six weeks, most things have been established. So I feel pretty good um, about how things are going and I'll show you what we have going on. Look at our mint in the container. It has done extremely well. Literally, you remember it was up on the table here in a container and I moved it to this pot and it has done extremely well and gotten much, much bigger. And then this is bed number one. You can see overall things are doing well. Um, that's romaine lettuce there that's popping up nicely. That's some um, there. And with my lettuce, I did um, some individual like heads like this because I like it, um, especially the romaine. I like the bigger leaves. Um, but then, of course, you'll see when I show you some of the other beds, I sewed it as like baby greens so that it gets smaller and it's not a full head. But here is um, some kale. Those are rainbow beets. This one stack there, that's dino kale or lacinto kale. Um, this is Merlot lettuce. I love the pretty, pretty, pretty color of that. This is um, spinach that's doing well. Um, here is a eucalyptus that I bought at that um, nursery when I, when I was out of town. That's more kale. More kale down the middle that all looks pretty good. And then over here is the tatsoi. Remember I told you this is my first time doing that? It's looking really, really good. I had some last week in a salad. It's like a spinach green um, is the best way I can describe it, but that's looking good as well. Okay, so this is the bed right beside it. This bed is mostly broccoli and spinach. You can see there's some spinach there that looks really, really good. Um, this is fantail spinach. This is more of a Bloomsdale spinach. This is broccoli, these big leaves here. I had some insect damage, um, but overall, like you can see some insect damage on that one. I had another one there that was really, really eaten up that I pulled and I replanted some um, spinach there. So that's some new spinach. That's actually Galilee spinach, which is a new variety that I'm trying that a friend gifted me some seeds. This is all the spinach, more broccoli. Again, you can see that I have some pest damage and I have sprayed and sprayed and sprayed. Um, but yeah, you can see that there. But see, like this one looks really, really good. That's right beside it. So, and this one looks good. No broccoli um, as of yet, but it should be coming very, very soon. So, pest damage, but overall, not too bad. So, let me take you over here to this bed. The first bed on the other side. This is, on the right side, is the cauliflower that I planted. Um, look at my bok choy. My first time doing bok choy. That is absolutely beautiful. And I think that it's ready. Like, I've never done bok choy before, but... I don't know how much bigger it has to get. I think that's ready. I'm gonna put it in the stir fry or something. That's more romaine lettuce. And then this row is broccoli. You can see that I don't have as much insect damage on the broccoli on this side as I did on the other side, but I do have quite a bit of insect damage on the cauliflower. Um, I pulled one up that was really, really bad, but these, I'm going to see if we can still get it to head up because all of it is not bad, just some of it. So again, <clears throat> this bed has grown as well. If you've grown bok choy before, let me know. How do I know when it's done? Because I've never grown it before. So very happy um, about that. Now, let's move on to this bed. This is the bed with the squash, y'all, that... I'm tired of waiting. Let me show you. So this is the squash. It still has the green stripes on it. You can still kind of press it and indent it. You can see that right there. And it's not a uniform color. So y'all help me with this butternut. Let me, let me hear your votes. Should I pull it or should I keep waiting? So 
I planted it, planted it, <laughs> I planted it. I gotta go back and look at my notes, but whatever it is, um, it's been 90, let's say about 100 days. And the variety says it's 120 day maturity. So technically in three more weeks, it'll be supposed to be mature. But y'all, it's not doing anything. It hasn't gotten worse, but it's not getting any better either. Okay, so on the squash, it hasn't gotten worse, but it's just simply like it's stuck in state, right? So everything I read is said it's ripe when you can press it and it's not supposed to make an indentation. And when it's uniform, like tan in color and no longer the green stripes. Y'all can see it still has the green stripes. It's not uniform in color and you can still press it. So I think I planted it July 5th, something somewhere along in there. Anyway, when I counted it, um, it's been, it's been right around 100 days. So it was like 20 more days to go. I'm just tired of looking at it because everything else in my hot tub looks good except that bed. And that's just my impatience, um, I'm sure. Um, yeah. And I want to use that bed for something else and to plant something else. But right now, I don't have anything to go in the bed. Um, I'm going to have to start some seeds. And I think what I'm going to put in the bed is probably some more Swiss chard or some Swiss chard because I don't have any, I only have one Swiss chard plant growing right now. And so I wanted to try my hand at that a little bit more because um, I only had one plant last year. And then probably some like more broccoli. I really want to have, like we eat a lot of broccoli. We probably eat broccoli every week. I love fresh broccoli and I want to have enough to actually put in the freezer and to, to, to store. And it's not like broccoli keeps on going. Like once you get the head, it's over and done with. So, and kind of like cabbage. So anyway, I can use that bed for sure, um, definitely. So I'm just debating on whether do I rip it all up, get rid of it, or do I wait three more weeks? What y'all think? Tell me what you think, put it down in the comments um, and just let me know if I'm being whiny and impatient. Let me show you the rest of what's going on. Okay, so here's the third bed on the right side. It is doing well. So the first two rows are all carrots and y'all I have thinned these carrots and it doesn't look like it but I have um <laughs> so they are doing quite well this is some kale curly kale and then this is all lettuce you can see here I need to come and harvest some lettuce this is a European muscular mi mix this is Merlot this is cilantro that I grew from seed for the very first time. I'm really excited about that. That's more bok choy. There's more bok choy back there. That's some more cilantro seed that I grew, that I grew from seed. So this one is, is getting on up there, which is good. And then this is some new lettuce. It's called Brentwood. It's a red lettuce from, I think, Botanical Interest that I bought. I was traveling somewhere and bought the seed and tried it. And so it's coming up nicely. And then you can see this nice lettuce there. So we're doing good on the lettuce um, and the carrots. I'm gonna try to come in and thin these carrots one more time. Um, but so far, so good. Now let's move on across the way. This bed is doing okay. This bed is mostly broccoli. That's broccoli there, broccoli there. Here's where I planted that um, experiment of radishes. And so they are coming up. I was doing the interplanting, remember? These are watermelon radishes. More broccoli, more broccoli. And then that last row is cabbage that's not doing a whole lot of nothing. It's moving really, really, really slow. And I'm not quite sure why. And oh, these are carrots in between. So y'all, these are actually carrots that I thinned from over here. And I put over here to root and they have rooted and they're growing. So that was another experiment. Now let's walk across here to the... <clears throat> oh, look. This is my alyssum. This is my first time growing alyssum. This is a flower that um, can stand the winter. Um, and so I see that it's budded, which is really, really pretty. Little small white flowers there. And then I have some pansies. And then this is calendula that I did from seed that's growing, just no flowers yet. So this is gonna be kind of like my flower bed to give me 
um, something pretty to look at and also maybe a little bit of color um, throughout the winter season. And then this here, I think is a Snapdragon. I'm almost positive that's gonna be a Snapdragon. So then over here, that's where the basil was. I pulled that up. You see, I still have rosemary hanging on. I have my eucalyptus hanging on. I have my oregano. I'm gonna fill this bed up with some more soil because I feel like it's gotten a little low, especially where the basil and stuff was. And then we'll put something else there. Probably, maybe I'll do some parsley or some chives or some type of herb that will withstand the winter. Then, let's look at this. These are the rows of green. So this middle row is the row that I started first, which is why you see the most growth there. <clears throat> I'm hoping that in the next 30 days when we do the next tour, that this will be full on. Um, I feel like it's growing slower than it normally does, but maybe again, I am just being impatient because I feel like I planted it a long time ago. But in reality, <clears throat> I have to go back and see when I planted it. <clears throat> and I think greens have like maybe a, 60 to 65 to 85 day maturity i think so anyway it's growing nicely you can see this row there and then this row is kale and the kale is doing good um and you can see again how this is growing you know slow slower because i, I planted this last and so the only thing that's not planted is the rest of this row. So I have probably a half of a row that I can still plant more stuff. And I think I'm just gonna do more greens um, is what I'm gonna do on the back half of this row. But you can see, I have had, you can see where something, looks like something has eaten it. So again, I don't know if that's an insect. I don't know if that's an animal. It's like you can see these little bitty places where Something that's eating it, but then beside it, it'll be just fine. So, I don't remember that from last year, but maybe it did. So, you can see that all the way down. It's growing, so I just got to finish planting the rest of this row. Look what we have here. Some bell peppers. So, this is one of the plants that I left in the high tunnel. And as you can see, um, I have some bell peppers to harvest so those two are the pretty big ones nice size i have a little couple of small ones there's another one there that i'll just let stay on here and then here are some jalapenos um that are still going there i left two or three plants in here just simply because i couldn't pull them up out of the ground um and they're still going as you can see they're still going now look at these cabbages they look good they look near perfect, no insect damage or anything. So I'm glad about that. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Hopefully those will stay good. Across the way you see that's broccoli that's doing well. Um, that's another jalapeno plant that still has some jalapenos on it. And again, it wasn't necessarily left on purpose. It was just because I couldn't get it out of the ground. So I have, I think three jalapeno plants and a bell pepper plant that's still producing and I'll take it. That's um, more stuff there. These are the um, the Shima Josiah greens. Those are, that are, those, that are, those are new that I planted this year. I told you guys about those. So those are doing well. Um, that's more broccoli over there and Brussels sprouts. That's kale. So overall, things are looking good. And then there's another bok choy right there. So y'all, that's it. That's a quick tour of what's going on in the high tunnel. And so again, um, I'm, ex I'm excited and I'm pleased with the way things are going um, so far. You know, insects have come in and done some damage, but we have plenty that the insects have not gotten. So I'm thankful for that. Um, also, I'm excited again, because remember I told you this is a journey. And so some stuff that I hadn't done well before is doing well now, like the spinach. I have yet to grow 
spinach successfully except strawberry spinach my first year in the back of the house <clears throat> i grew that pretty successfully but i messed it up because i didn't know what i was doing and so to see that the spinach is doing well meaning you know there's some greenery there there's some leaves i could pick off i'm assuming it's supposed to get bigger but that's more than what i've ever gotten before so i'm glad about that um, I have bok choy that I've never done before. I have cilantro that I did from seed that I've never done before. And I have the tatsoi and the chima jasaya. And then I have turnip greens. So again, even though this is my, I guess, going into my third year of gardening, there's still new things that I'm doing that I have never done before or I'm doing again that I haven't been successful at. And so again, I just want to encourage you to never stop trying if something doesn't go well one season try it again right try it again and like the butternut so y'all know what happened with the butternut squash remember i had the powdery power powdery mildew problem and i sprayed neem oil on it and it destroyed all the leaves again that was a mistake on my part i should have kind of diluted it with something but i didn't know um, but remember, I just left it in there. I didn't I didn't fool with it. And so I actually do have squash that grew. I don't have as many as I probably would have had I not had that problem. And now it's just like they're not maturing. And I don't know if they're just not maturing because it's not time and they technically have, you know, 20 more days or if it's because the temperature has dropped and they thrive in heat. I don't know. But the point is, is that I at least have some squash and I didn't have that before. So um, anyway, I'm pleased. This is the first tour of the fall. So um, we're excited. We're going to see what, what happens. I mean, I think that, um, again, like we have lettuce that we can harvest today. We have bell peppers. We have some more jalapenos. So I'm going to grab me a basket and get some stuff. But thank you guys so much for joining me um, today as we kind of walk through the outside garden through the tunnel. And I kind of showed you how things were going. Um, it's about to be November in just a day or so and so we are full on fall headed into winter and we'll see what the next 30 days brings but i would love to know how your fall gardens are doing if you have a fall garden or if you're still in a climate where you're still getting some summer stuff let me know down below how your stuff is doing um what's going on and what you have planned i would love 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 to know if you like what you're seeing please subscribe to my channel tell a friend tell a neighbor uh, who is interested in in gardening growing food homesteading living a more sustainable life cooking from scratch you know all the things food preservation all all the things we talk about on this channel remember it is all a journey until next time let's grow together i'll see you next time friend